Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you to everyone who's taken the time this morning to participate in this call. And uh, especially thank you to Sarah and Jay for and, and to all the others who've who've worked to to pull this uh, pull this together. Um, we've heard a lot about this tool at some of our previous meetings, and uh, look forward to getting into the hands-on phase, which uh, which starts this morning. So, with that, Kirby, I, I don't know whether I turn it back over to you or whether I introduce Sarah, or whether I introduce Jay to take it from here. Let's well, just turn it over to Sarah and she can maybe give people a little bit of info and uh, maybe do a test and then we'll we'll have Jay give a presentation. Excellent. Okay, Sarah, it's yours. Sure. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll turn it over to Jay shortly to get into the meat of things. Um, but thank you all for taking the time to walk through this this morning. Um, this will be focused on the weightings portion, but we'll give a bit of an overview of the whole risk and uncertainty decision tool. Uh, we'll be using the poll feature on the webinar uh, later on in the presentation after a bit of background. So I'll just do a quick test of that right now. And if you can just select a response, that would be wonderful. And we will make sure that it is working for folks. If you aren't seeing a poll at the moment, uh, please unmute yourself and, and let us know. And Sarah, I might add, if you're seeing the poll, but you can't respond, raise your hand and let us know. <laughs> yes, also that. And I don't know, um, Tony, if we have anyone who is only calling in and for whatever reason not able to be on a screen um, at the moment, it would be good to know that. I don't know that that is the case, but I want to flag that um, now. I'll just I'll confirm with Adam. I know he's called in, but I think he usually calls in and uses his computer as well at the same time. So I just will have him confirm. I'm all good. I've submitted. Everything's good here. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Great. Anyone having issues submitting a response to the poll? Okay, and I think um, Jason will note this later, but I'll just note from the top that uh, if there are any members of the public here, we would ask you not to respond to the polls that we have later or, or to gather uh, board input on the weightings. And with that, I will turn it over to, uh, and I will close the poll so this Hopefully, Maya, you can take the screen back. Thanks. And if you can pull up the uh, presentation. Yeah, great. Thank you. Are you ready for me to roll? Yeah, take it away. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so what we're doing here, and as always, thanks to Kirby and Sarah for getting this excellent uh, presentation kind of uh, prepped up for us here. Uh, what we're going to do is run through some slides. I'll try not to take too much time, uh, but we want to sort of reorient you so now we're 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 doing it right we're doing the risk and uncertainty um at least a portion of it and and so we wanted to just reintroduce you to what exactly it is that we're doing um and you know the sort of the goal for today and, and we'll try and get you prepped up really quickly here um and then we can start um 
you know, giving our readings to some of this stuff. So uh, as a reminder, what we're doing today is we're addressing a portion of the risk and uncertainty decision tool, um, and that has to do with the uh, different weightings, and, and we'll kind of give you a good sense of what we mean by that. Next slide. So if you think about what we need to do for management in the case of Qatar or for any species, you end up, you have these uh, governing documents and they usually require some sort of action to take place if uh, something is going um, wrong or I guess right as well uh, in the population. And so in the case of Tatog and Amendment 1, we have this rule that says that the current F exceeds the regional threshold level. In other words, uh, that we're overfishing. The board must initiate corrective action to reduce F to the regional target level via a management document within one year of receiving the overfishing stock status. And then the guidance for that is that the management measures will be developed based on, and you can see the red font there, at least a 50% probability of achieving the F target. And so um, at least isn't exactly 50%. So how do we determine what that final probability will be in the end? Next slide. So the risk and uncertainty decision tool, it incorporates a whole bunch of information related to, not shockingly, risk and uncertainty. Um, there's a bunch of technical inputs in there. And then associated with those technical inputs are weights. Um, and that has to do with the way we kind of model the information uh, in the end, uh, where we put them into this logistic um, regression. Um, so we have these weights, uh, and what those weights do is they give you the relative importance of each of these different um, elements within uh, the overall tool. So those weighted inputs, they're combined, and in the end, what they produce is that recommended probability of achieving the F target. Uh, and it does it in a way that, you know, explicitly addresses lots of the things that we care about with our populations that we manage. So we take that uh, recommended probability and then we use it um, in our projections to develop those management options. Um, and so uh, next slide, please. Um, the weightings for the, dish, for the decision tool, they're the focus of today's discussion. And before I, I hit that second bullet there, you know, the importance of this, if you recall, what we do in a lot of situations is we start off at a 50% probability because we don't know where else we should be starting. Uh, and then we ask the technical committee, usually in this iterative process, um, you know, hey, how about 60% and how about 40% and how about 45% and we sort of do this, um, you know, uh, game with uh, picking these probabilities um, and it's not really clear why people are asking for these various probabilities. And so what we're doing here is being really explicit about what is important to us in our decision process um, and weighting those things in a corresponding manner. So the way we're gonna operationalize this weighting is we are going to do some polling today on some questions. And the responses to the poll that we're conducting today, those are gonna be averaged to produce the preliminary weightings for the, the talk, uh, for the TATOG decision tool questions. Next slide. So um, the technical inputs, uh, you have the current status uh, of a component of the biology, ecology, or the fishery. Um, those things, uh, we're having them 
you know, originally gets scored by the technical committee and the committee for um, economics and social sciences. And then we're going to add in board and advisory panel input uh, as well. And so as an example, a stock status technical input would be the probability that overfishing is occurring as produced by uh, the stock assessment. Uh, and then another example is that management uncertainty technical input could be a score of, this is kind of a sliding scale. So it could be a score of five, um, which would be very high. And that's due to significant illegal fishing activities, uh, which we think we have uh, in the case of Tatog uh, in some instances. So that's the technical input. So that's part of the tool. And then the weightings. And so what the weightings do is it tells us how important each of the technical inputs are to the board's risk considerations. So these are based on the board preferences. Um, and so if the board considered stock status to be, and this is just made up, but just to give you a sense of it, if we considered stock status to be twice as important as management uncertainty, uh, the stock status could be weighted twice as high as the management uncertainty can pull. Um, and that way we're putting within the tool in an a priori fashion, because we're doing it today before we have any of this um, you know, other information that we're looking at, um, that's going to be weighted, the, the stock status is gonna be weighted twice as much in that eventual probability that we produce from the tool. Next slide. So um, the components of the decision tool that are listed here. You've got stock status all the way down to uh, the socioeconomic information uh, at the bottom there. So we're going to review each component in greater detail as we work through the weightings questions later on. Uh, note that for most of the components, if there is a concern, um, like there's high management uncertainty, it makes the probability more precautionary. The one, uh, and that's kind of standard across where these types of tools are used in other, uh, you know, namely like the federal fisheries, um, everything is sort of leading you to being more precautionary. Uh, what is unique about the tool that we've developed is that in, in the case of the socioeconomic components, they can move in either direction. So you can see that that's why there's blue arrow and the orange arrow. And so this provides the ability to push back on other parts of the decision tool components that increase precaution. And so an example of this is the socioeconomic component could account for the potential negative short-term economic impacts of lowering the harvest level. Um, and so, um, you know, that would allow you to kind of pull back on what may be this compounding precautionary effect of the other components. The, it's not always the case though that the socioeconomic components are pulling back you know, in a less precautionary manner. Um, in particular, when you think about the long-term uh, potential aspects of some of the socioeconomic factors, those could push you in a more precautionary uh, manner as well. So, this component moves in both directions. Um, and that's a unique part of, um, of, the, of the tool that we've developed. Next slide. So um, this is just kind of a, again, a, an example of how this will work in kind of a visual way. Um, so these examples are gonna, gonna kind of show the impacts of weightings on the final outcome. Um, so next, uh, next slide. So uh, the first example is that the default weighting where uh, each component of the decision tool has equal weight within the model. So because both model uncertainty and management uncertainty were scored as high in this case, you can see the two blue arrows there, they increase the probability by the same amount. The two arrows are, um, uh, of equal length. Next slide. So in the second example here, 
model uncertainty has a weight that is two times the management uh, uncertainty. Um, and so um, you have, as a result, even though the model uncertainty and the management uncertainty have the same score, they're both high, the model uncertainty score increases the, the precaution twice as much as the management uncertainty. Um, and thanks, whoever uh, flipped that <laughs> the extra slide there. Uh, but you can see that the arrow for the high management uncertainty is about half the length of the high model uncertainty. So we've placed more value on that model uncertainty in this example. And so that drives more precaution uh, into the, um, the outcome of the uh, decision tool. Next slide. So um, a little bit on the weighting input process. We are going to work through the components of the decision tool. We're gonna to go one by one. Uh, and here is our rubric. We're gonna review the type of information used for the technical input. Um, we're going to clear up any questions about that component before we uh, launch the poll. And then we're going to fill out the poll for that component. And then we're gonna take each of those poll questions, uh, I'm sorry, each of the poll questions is going to ask the board members to rate the importance of that component. And you can see the scale there goes from one to five. Um, and you know, you're going to do this relative to the other components of the decision tool. So if you'd like all components of the decision tool to be weighted equally, you can answer all of the survey questions with equally important. Uh, and then the scores will be averaged to produce those preliminary weightings. Next slide. So um, just because it would be difficult to know going in blind uh, which things you might want to wait um, more than the others, uh, here is a table that kind of shows you all of the components at the same time. Um, going in, the default weight for each of them is 0 0.1. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be adjusting here or, or not. You, you know, in the end, we could end up um, just kind of back at this same place. But, you know, the point is that we have explicitly gone in and thought through each of these and have weighed in on each of them in a very transparent way. Um, and so there they are, you've got a set of questions on stock status, then you've got another set of questions on additional uncertainties that we care about, like model uncertainty, management uncertainty, uh, environmental uncertainty. Um, we've got another uh, component that we put in as a risk component, and that is the importance of the species. And remember, this is sort of a generic, um, set up in a generic way. So this could, you know, apply to any species. So you would want to think about the ecosystem or the trophic importance of Tatog uh, in this case. And then we have a series of socioeconomic uh, questions, and they are split out into two clusters. Um, the first would be short term. So your short term commercial socioeconomic effects and uh, your short term recreational socioeconomic effects. And then uh, those same two considerations, commercial and recreational for the long term as well. So um, I'm sure we can kind of come back to this slide again if, if anybody needs. Uh, but um, hopefully I've kind of yammered on here long enough that you've gotten a good look at these. Uh, next slide. And with that, Mr. Chair, uh, that wraps up that kind of introductory uh, portion um, of this. And I'm happy to go back and answer any questions anybody has before we uh, launch into our uh, actual poll. Thank you, Jay. Excellent presentation um, and a good review and a good add on to what we've seen uh, at these meetings before. So any questions at this point for Jay? And, and 
Tony, why don't you just just let people talk or identify people as they put their hand up? We have um, John Clark followed by Dan McKiernan. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the presentation, Jay. Um, just curious, do the weights add up to one so that greater weight on one uh, variable will reduce weights on others, or can it be just any any range of weights for each item? Good question, John. Um, and so I will, I'll offer a comment, and, and if I get this <laughs> wrong, uh, Sarah um, can jump in, or I don't know if Katie Drew is on the call as well. Um, so I think, you know, the way that we have this set up is it, it'll be kind of a ranking. Uh, and in the end, the weights will scale because these go into uh, a logistic. And so everything kind of gets squashed down between zero uh, and one. Um, so I think that's the way this is going to work. It will all scale uh, in the end. Hey, Dan. Yeah, uh, Jason, if you'd indulge me, um, I guess I'm struggling with the very simple concept of management uncertainty. And maybe from my benefit, you you could give me an example of a species that we're managing that has very low management uncertainty and one that has high management uncertainty, just for a comparison. And yeah. why that why management would be uncertain. Sure, sure, sure. Um, maybe I'll start off with just sort of a high level comment and, and that is, um, and what I'm doing is stalling to give myself time to think of some uh, examples for you. Um, but the, the concept here is with management uncertainty is you implement management and you have, um, you know, a certain level of success or failure in that the management that you implement and what i mean by that is you put a set of regulations in and uh you know your um the outcome whether people are it could take a number of different forms it could be people understanding that the regulations have changed and abiding by them or um you know, willfully going against the regulations or or what have you. So that's what we're talking about here is how closely uh, your, you know, on the ground management looks to what you tried to implement. Um, and then another aspect of that is a lot of times when you implement management, you are expecting a certain outcome and, and sometimes that outcome uh, may or may not be correct and so that's the other aspect of management uncertainty is your you know determination uh, of the effect of that management and the outcome um, you know that you eventually see on the ground and, and it could be that everyone followed the rules perfectly fine you were just off on that projection because you missed a variable or, or something like that and in, in your um, you know when you tried to project it um, so I guess uh, by way of examples ugh, it, it's a tough one I, I don't I guess I'll probably answer it in a broad fashion again I would suggest that something like Tatog that has a high recreational component. Um, so you've got, you know, the majority of your harvest occurring in the recreational fishery. That's something that probably has a lot of management uncertainty. And, and that is in large part to the fact that the way we're monitoring it is through a statistical survey and not through a, um, you know, a, a quota system or a census system. And, and so a counter to that would be something like, um, I don't know, yellowtail flounder, where you're almost entirely uh, commercial. So you, in theory, <laughs> maybe uh, me giving you this example, Dan, is, is not the best one to do, but something like yellowtail flounder um, might be something that has less management uncertainty because it has a high uh, commercial 
component. It has an almost entirely commercial component. It is a ground fish species, which has a high monitoring component. Um, and so that'd be something that has less management uncertainty associated with it in theory. Okay. Yeah. That yeah, that makes sense, Jay. So and now that I think about it, species that have that are dependent on MRIP um, would gener would be high management uncertainty only because the the precision of MRIP estimates are, are is is lacking as opposed to the census of a commercial landing. So okay, that's a good answer. Thanks. All right, Bill, we have the full New Jersey contingent next in line. We have Joe Semino, then Tom Fody, and then Adam Nowalski. Okay, we'll take it in that order then, Joe. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Tony. Um, so I have a question, I guess, to you, Jay, and the group, maybe. If, um, it sounds like we're going to be voting as an board as a whole um, but we have multiple assessments and and some of them are you know uh, not as robust model wise as others so some board members might have a greater concern for say model uncertainty and that's legitimate but it isn't true for other areas so have we kind of thought through how that's going to play into the weighting here yeah, good question, Joe. And so you can, you know, stop me if I am going off in a direction that you didn't intend. So I think uh, the question you raised is a good one. We talked about that a ton. In fact, at one point, prior to you know going with this logistic version of of the tool, um, we were thinking about kind of developing different decision trees for you know different types of assessments so you know more analytical robust assessments would have one set of questions and then data limited uh, or model resistant um, you know situations would have another one uh, in a case like so I think it's a good question in one of the ways we got around that to to sort of collapse to a single method here, um, but have it work across different situations as we decided to do this. So we're not running through this decision tool for all species, we're running through it for TATOG specifically. And that will be the process from here on out um, where, you know, these weightings are going to be specific to the FMP or the species or stock, you know, whatever the unit is. Um, and so I think you can, if you feel differently about one species over another, you can reflect that You're going to be weighting them in a separate exercise. Um, so if that's, that's the way I interpreted your question, Joe, um, if you meant something different just let me know jason i just wanted this is sarah i just wanted to chime in if i could yep um i also want to note that while we are doing this weighting exercise across the tatog board the decision tools are split up um based on region so the technical inputs provided by the tcs will be split up into four separate decision tools and they will are scored separately. So there will be four separate scores for model uncertainty. And so while yes, uh, there, there may be, for example, board members who are more concerned with model uncertainty than others. And, and so that would be averaged out and they will all be getting the same model uncertainty weight, they will be getting different model uncertainty scores. So if you had a region where you had very high model uncertainty, and then that's multiplied by whatever the board determines the weight should be, it's still going to get a higher total score for that than another component that has a lower model uncertainty score multiplied by the board weight. So I think it will still reflect concerns about model uncertainty. The other thing is even if um, something has a low um, score,
score now? For example, maybe uh, if you had stock status and you knew that right now there isn't a concern with stock status, you could still say this is an important factor to me, so I will still want to weight this high, and it might not um, have as much impact in the current iteration of this tool because stock status isn't over, there's an overfishing or it's not overfished, but in future iterations, if there was a, a stock status concern, that would still have that high weight. So just because there isn't a concern with it now, you're sort of thinking about it on a more holistic level of, in the grand scheme of things for Tatog, if there was an issue with this component for my species, how important, or for my region, how important would that be uh, in comparison to the other components, rather than necessarily a, a really focused on this moment, what's the biggest issue for Chitog? So taking a step back and looking at the big picture. Thanks for that, Sarah. Joe, does that fully answer your question? Yes, and thank you, both of you. Okay, very good. Tom, you had a question? Yeah, a question and a comment. Um, I look at this and I, I, I Think about what we've been dealing with with the SSC for the Mid-Atlantic Council because of parameters the Mid-Atlantic Council gave the SSC years ago. And we constantly have quotas that we could harvest a much higher, but by the time the SSC went through the precautionary approach that they used because of directions the Mid-Atlantic Council gave them, it basically reduced the quota. And years of years of trying to justify why we're above two targets you know, two times target and, and we're still not increasing the quota. I don't know, Some sometimes I worry that we can look at this and what's in there to protect us from doing that and wind up in the situation we have the public totally losing trust because we show them this bigger, you know, without going to the precautionary approach, this bigger quota they can harvest and all of a sudden we're greatly reducing it. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. How do we safeguard in this? I know we're not obliged like the Mid-Atlantic Council over what the SSC does, but uh, I have some concerns and I'm trying to figure out how do we weight this more that we don't wind up in the same situation. And like what, what they just said that we're going to basically give recreational species are going to be more precautionary because we don't have necessary data, yet it's no fault of the recreational sector that we're going to affect both the recreational commercial on those species. It's the fault of us not being able to do the sound science to get the better information into the models. I mean, that's that's what I'm, I'm trying to deal with right now. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Tom. I, I appreciate the opportunity to sort of offer the, the context there with, um, you know, the, the risk policy that probably most of the folks on the call are most familiar with. Um, so I'll start by saying, you know, one of the unique things about this tool is we have a situation where we can actually, um, and I, on the, if you think back to the slide with the uh, arrows on it, most of the blue arrows are kind of pointing uh, to the left, but then the socioeconomic components could go left or right. And so that's a unique aspect of the tool that we developed where everything isn't necessarily pushing you towards the more um, conservative uh, precautionary side of things. So there is an opportunity here for the board to, um, you know, offer their concerns about short term or, or long term socioeconomic impacts, for instance, to a recreational fishery or, or what have you. So um, we have that built into our tool here is that ability to kind of pull back a little bit. Um, additionally, I guess what I would say uh, in a more general sense is that, you know, you, in essence, we are kind of already, we have a process where we are accounting for uncertainty. Um, we're just doing it in a manner that uh, is less 
transparent. And I think we're all, when we're making judgments, when we're asking the technical committee to develop options, you know, under various um, levels of uncertainty, um, you know, that's exactly what we're we're doing. Exactly what we're talking about here, just in a in a way that is not as refined, and people within their heads are kind of doing exactly the polling that we're about to do. Uh, but the polling just allows us to be a little more explicit with it. But but in the end, you you know, when you're saying 50%, you want 50% certainty, um, you know, in your outcome. There's a whole side of that uncertainty distribution that you, you know, conceivably could be uh, harvesting. So you are, in fact, foregoing um, potential harvest, even in our current situation. So I guess what I'm trying to say, I'll try and say it in less words, is this isn't, in fact, super different from what we're doing now. It just does it in a more explicit uh, way. I'll also chime in here just to note that if you are uh, wanting to take into account what what I'm hearing are are basically socioeconomic concerns about how being more precautionary might have negative impacts on the commercial or the recreational fishery. The socioeconomic components are basically in there to do that. And, and specifically, for all intents and purposes, the short term socioeconomic components are the piece that do that. Because in most cases, the short term component is the piece that is going to, quote unquote, push back on the probability. So it's reducing the precaution. So if it's really, in your view, important that those uh, short-term potential negative effects of being more precautionary are taken into account, you can weight that short-term higher to reflect that or other things less to reflect that your preference is that those socioeconomic effects are, um, are getting uh, that level of importance. So that's exactly what allows the ability to essentially um, come back towards a 50% level or reduce the precaution. On the flip side, if your concern is more, you know, long-term sustainability and those socioeconomic effects, you could weight the longer-term component higher. But that short-term piece is really in there to provide that ability to push back and account for um, potential short-term negative effects there. Okay, can I do a quick follow-up on that oh, just for a second? You can, Tom, in a minute. Um, before we Tom follows up and before we go to Adam, I wanna ask Jay and Sarah, how much time that they feel they need to take people through this tool? What I don't want, what I wanna avoid is people having to drop off the call because of other commitments before they've had a chance to finish that process. So do you guys, you folks have a time target in mind? I mean, is it 30 minutes? What is it? Um, Sarah, I, I don't have a good answer for that. I don't know if you guys have tested it and have a sense of the timing. Yeah, it's also difficult for me to provide an exact answer. I'll say I, I think it's helpful to answer these questions up front because uh, a large piece of uh, sort of spoilers for the next part of the presentation is that we're essentially walking through each of the components, making sure people understand that, and then answering uh, questions as we go. Um, so, you know, for example, management uncertainty, we'll circle back to that. But I think it's helpful for people to have a good understanding of it before they start ranking things. So um, I think it's I think it's worth answering folks' questions here. And, and if we don't answer them now, we'll probably end up uh, getting stuck on those questions later. So that's sort of my two cents. Sorry, I don't have an exact number. It just sort of depends as, on the amount of questions board members will have. Okay, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Tom, go ahead and do, go ahead with the follow-up. 
Yeah, I, the other concern I have is that we, when we start this process, and I haven't gone to technical committee meetings like I used to many years ago, but we always want to use models. We put a lot of precautionary approach into those models and how we do the da data. So I always figure we put one level of precautionary, then another level of precautionary, and then another level of precautionary. So I'm, I'm just concerned that this is part of that, or how do we basically stop from doing all of those precautionary in the models? That we basically and leave it up just for this tool. I don't. I don't know if that's an option. Yeah, um, Tom. I, I think that's a fair, uh, fair statement. You know, I think um, I'm trying to think of the, the best way to sort of respond to it. I, I think you know there there is this. We talked about this a lot at, at the working group. The, this sort of compounding of of uncertainties throughout the process. I think, in general, um, you know, while I think some components in the assessment process itself are done in a precautionary manner, it's generally just you know putting pulling data together and, and running the model. The model produces uncertainty um, and like that's what we're getting at here like those are the components so that you know that we're trying to look at and, and think through a little bit more so while I do acknowledge that you know in the for instance the collection of uh, survey data and, and things like that there there could be some elements of people being precautionary in, in the way they're kind of configuring the data. I, I don't think it's a gigantic concern. And, and in fact, what is really produced is uncertainty and, and nobody has done anything with the uncertainty at this point. It's you know our job now to start to think about those uncertainties and whether to account for them in a significant way or, uh, or not. I'll also add that the wording of the technical inputs, especially looking at some of these uncertainty components, for example, environmental uncertainty, is that uh, it states, is there uncertainty that isn't being accounted for by the model? So an example of this would be, you know, with a environmental uncertainty, it asks about predator and prey relations, but says specifically that aren't accounted for in the model. So in the case of Atlantic Menhaden, we wouldn't double count uh, the predator prey interactions there because that's already being accounted for by the NWAX mice model. But if this was Menhaden before we had done that, this would be a way to um, account for that when it's missing. So there is uh, an eye to uh, trying not to double count uncertainty concerns or, or components here. Hey, Adam. Great, thanks very much. So a procedural question as I try to think about answering the question of how do I weight this item relative to the others? Uh, does staff intend to provide a list of all the items we have to wait on the screen at the same time, or could they point me to somewhere to pull that? Uh, I don't know if I'd have to go back to the one of the TOTOG meetings from last year where we discussed risk and uncertainty. I've been trying to jump through the website to find a list of those for myself, but it would be helpful to have the list of all of the factors we're going to rate in front of us when we're asked the question, well, how do you rate this relative to the others? So if you don't plan on putting it up, if you could help me get it so I could have it next to me, that would be helpful. Do you wanna take that one, Sarah? Yeah, Kirby, I don't know if we want to, we could just send out, unfortunately with the poll, it takes over your entire screen. So there's no way for me to put something on the screen at the same time as the poll. Um, Kirby, I don't know if we, we could send an email out just with the list, uh, if that would be helpful. Is the list the slide that you had up earlier? 
Yes. So I just took a photo of that slide. I don't know if sure, you want to put it up and give people an opportunity to do that. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can, you can take a screenshot uh, through the webinar interface and that will save to your desktop. So as an image that you can pull up later. Perfect. That will work for me. Thank you. Um, Bill, I just want to make sure Mike Luisi's question was answered, perhaps through other questions. He had his hand up for a while and then he put it down. So I just want to check in with him. Mike, do you have a question? It was more of an example. Um, and maybe I will ask it. I was trying to save some time, but I don't think it's going to take long. Um, you know, I do agree with Tautog that management uncertainty is important. Um, however, let's just say, for instance, uh, Jason, that I believe stock status is more important than management uncertainty. As we go through this, how would how would those answers be made? Would I would I say that I strong? I I forget exactly what the what the terminology was for the poll. But I would say that stock status is the most, let's say, let's say I believe that it's the most important, but management uncertainty um, is just under that. How would those answers be made as we, as we walk through this? Yep, uh, good question, Mike. Um, and I'm, I'm having to sort of flip back myself so I don't uh, get this wrong. So the scale goes from one to five. Um, and so, you know, the questions are sort of characterized as relative to other components of the, of the decision tool, how important is management uncertainty as a, for instance. And so um, one would be much less important. Um, the middle of the range is equally important and the highest is much more important. So there's kind of the scale um, that you can uh, choose. And so there is a way to kind of pick you know, I think stock status uh, is much more important, and then management uncertainty is slightly more important. That would be sort I of see. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I that that one screen that was put up earlier was it went kind of fast. I, I wasn't sure exactly what the answers would look like. I got it now. Okay. Thanks, Jason. You got it. Hey, Tony. That's any awesome. other hands up? That's it, Bill. Excellent. Okay, so I believe, Sarah, this goes back to you now to uh, um, to run us all through the process. Sure. I, I think uh, Jason was planning on running through, but I am happy to also take over. Uh, Maya, can you click through the slides and Jason, let me know uh, if you want to run through it or if you would like me to. Yeah, whoever, whoever whoever is prepared to do so. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was prepared to to do it. Um, I, actually, let me ask you a question because I hadn't <laughs> thought of this part of it until right now. Sarah, is the intent to sort of review like the slide that's up in front of us here and then do the poll right at that uh, right at that moment? Is that the idea? Yeah, exactly. Sort of run through it, see if there are any questions about that particular component. And then if once we've answered all questions, we'll launch the poll just for that question. And uh, once folks have had a chance to respond to that, we'll move on to the next component. Got it. Um, yeah, so uh, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll stick with kind of running through the slide so that um, I'm not sure if Sarah is the one controlling the poll, so she can uh, concentrate on that part of it. Um, so here's our very first one. Uh, this is a technical component, and the component is, is the stock below the biomass threshold? Um, and so that's the question that the technical folks will be answering, and the, the input um, that this one takes is the probability from the stock assessment that the stock is below the biomass, I'm sorry, the biomass threshold. And so your awaiting question, this is now our question, is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is whether or not the stock is below the biomass threshold? Uh, 
And so to indicate that you would like all components to be weighted equally, you could score all components as three, which would be, you know, that sort of um, that middle choice. Uh, but that's the question uh, that you're answering in this case and for all the cases. Um, and so, you know, much less important all the way up to much more important. So I'm happy to clarify anything on that very first question for folks. Any need of clarification or are we, we ready to? We have Mike Luisi. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, just real quick, Mr. Chairman. This is what I was um, trying to, I should have waited till this slide came up. Um, so honestly, per, I mean, personally, I believe that it, within the stock status um, component that all of the, I think there were four different elements with spawning stock biomass and fishing mortality. I believe they're all equally important. However, I think that the stock, I think that the stock status element itself is going to be more important than some of the other um, elements that we're going to go through. So would I, would I rank the next, let's say that we go through four of these, would I rank them as equally important to, to themselves or am I looking at stock status that the entire block as whether or not that's more important than some of the other um, components such as environmental or socioeconomic? How would I, what, what's, what's the plan on how to, how to work through that? Yeah, yeah, uh, no, that's a good question, Mike. So um, I'm hoping, I, I'm gonna lead off here, but I'm hoping either Sarah or Katie will jump in um, to offer something as well. So it, I guess what I was gonna say is in the end, I don't think you need to get super hung up on being, um, not sure what the right word is, but you don't need to worry about being super precise. So to answer your question, Mike, I think in the case of the stock status stuff, in the way that you offered it in your question, you'd wanna be you know, looking down at your screen there. You wanna be to the right side of, of the scale because you think those are, um, you know, important factors, um, you know, how you kind of deal with each of those components individually, if you think, you know, Tatog is a, a long-lived, slow-growing species, right? So you think where the biomass uh, is, and I'm just making stuff up, well, not making it up, but just offering a, a way to put this into context. So, you know, maybe you think the biomass level is super important, so you want to rank that one as five and maybe the, the fishing aspect of the stock status you could put as four. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of how you could think about it. You could go back to another five, even within the stock status component, because in the end, this stuff is all going to get um, scaled, not just within the decision tool itself, but across the board members. Um, so you're, you are kind of, um, you know, all kind of contributing to this. So it, it'll smooth out in the end. I don't know. Okay. Sarah, Thank you. Maybe. Yeah. I'll just echo what, what Jay said. Um, it's across the whole, all of the components. So not just within stock status, but so if you, five isn't, oh, I can only give this to my one favorite component. You could give five to all of the stock status components if you wanted. Um, if you thought, uh, for example, the threshold components are the most important and then the target components are, are the second most component and then everything else in the stock, uh, in the risk and uncertainty tool is is about the same. You could say five for the thresholds, four for the uh, targets, and then threes for everything else. Um, you know, if for whatever reason stock status is your least concern, you can rate it as a one. But yeah, it's across all of the uh, all of the components of the decision tool there. 
And Bill, you have one more question from Adam Nowalski. Okay, go ahead, Adam. What is going to be the finality of this ranking here today? I heard earlier that we had at least one commissioner on from every state. That's great. Looking at the list of participants, it appears that we are short of having even half of what the total number of board members would typically be, figuring three per state. Is the intention to bring the results of this survey work back to a uh, board meeting that would occur during one of our regularly scheduled seasonal meetings outside of one of these non-meeting week meetings for further discussion or finalization? I, I just have some concerns about the finality of this. Um, given, I don't know how else to describe it, but the lack of participation that we seem to have from board members here today. Adam, I'll, um, I'll take a shot at that. My understanding is that, that there's, there's this webinar in, in, in person that people will participate in rating. And then from this will be a, um, an additional tool, if you will, developed that will enable those who haven't been able to participate in person today to be able to go through the same exercise and provide their input before this is all coalesced and brought to the board. Um, Kirby, Jay, Sarah, am I, am I on track with that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, that's exactly correct. Um, there will be a survey sent out to board members who are not able to attend this, and we will also provide the recording if they want to review the presentation and discussions that happened today so that everyone will get the same information and explanations and we'll also provide a copy of <clears throat> the slides. Uh, and another layer on top of that, uh, once we average together everyone's responses, this will also come back to the board uh, for review at, at one of the quarterly meetings so that this isn't a, a final uh, take on, on the weightings. There will be an opportunity to discuss them afterwards as well. Important, important point there. This is this is a test. The TOG is a test of this system, and and there might be some subsequent refinement. And and given my two years plus now experience with this board, I'm sure there'll be considerable considerable discussion before um, anything is is, is finalized. Um, I have a question uh, now for 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 Sarah and Jay. Going forward, do you do do you, is it your preference to take questions to continue taking questions as each element is brought up or or you know, how, how did you envision this unfolding at this point and again my my concern is a little bit of time and i, I don't have a feel for how many people might have to leave the call at 10 30. yeah thanks mr chair <clears throat> i so here's my um my projection <laughs> i think you know once we get through this first one maybe um, something that occurs to somebody on, on the next slide. I think we'll start to get less questions as we're going along. I think it'll speed up. Um, <clears throat> potentially, once we get to the socioeconomic questions, some things might pop up again. But um, but in the end, I, my sense is we could offer the opportunity. I think they will slow down. If it gets worse, we can sort of recon reconsider that. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's keep proceeding. Is there anybody else with any questions, Tony? I see no hands, Bill. Okay, go ahead, Jay, Sarah. Yep, so I think um, with no more questions, Sarah, I think the, we're ready for the poll. Okay, great. I will launch the poll. And again, if um, there are any members of the public, please do not respond to the poll. Um, for reassurances, we are able to see uh, the names associated. So we'll, we'll do some, um, we'll review responses after the fact. I'll also note that if anyone has to jump off partway through, we can follow up after the fact so that you can have an opportunity to provide input on any that you miss but hopefully we'll be able to run through these um, pretty quickly so i will launch and if you have issues 
seeing the poll or providing your answers, please um, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know. Okay, I'm seeing responses slow down. If there is anyone who needs more time to respond or uh, is having issues responding, please either unmute or, or raise a hand so that I can give you a little more time. Otherwise, I will close the poll. Not seeing any. Great, I think we can move on to the next slide. Thanks, Maya. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, go go back a few. We have three stock status slides that look remarkably similar. Um, so go back one more. There we go. Thank you. Okay, great. So the, the first one was on the threshold. Here is the next technical component, and that is, is the stock below the biomass target? So this is another technical input. Uh, it is the probability from the stock assessment that the stock is below the biomass target. And the weighting question for us is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is whether or not the stock is below the biomass target? There is your scale, one to five. Um, and again, there's that note about if you think they're all the same, uh, you want to be in the middle of that scale there. Happy to take any questions. Any hands, Tony? Oh, sorry, Bill, I muted myself. Uh, no hands. Excellent. Go ahead, Jay. All right. I think with no questions, we are ready for the poll question. Okay, again, I'm seeing responses slow down. If anyone needs a little more time or is having issues, please raise a hand. Not seeing any, I will close this poll. And we can move to the next slide, please. And next slide. Before you do that, Jay, Tom Fody has a question. Sure. This is just, ahead, quick, just a quick question. You're monitoring who can answer to these questions. Are you monitoring how we answer these questions? Because that should be made public if we are. 
I don't care. Yeah. They're, uh, they, I believe the answers are associated, yeah, they are associated with names. Um, we aren't going to provide uh, sort of instant feedback on, on how the board is voting because we want to combine it with other board members who are not present right now and make sure um, in case anyone from the public accidentally responded or anything like that, filter those out. And there isn't a way to do that um, via the webinar, but we will uh, compile all of those responses later. Okay, uh, on to the next then. Uh, this is the next technical component. And that is, is fishing mortality above the threshold? So again, uh, in this case, we're hitting the threshold first. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a technical input. It's the probability from the stock assessment that fishing mortality is above the threshold. And our question is relative to the other components of the decision tool. How important is whether or not fishing mortality is above the threshold? With that, I'm uh, happy to take any questions, or we can go to the poll if there are no questions. Any questions, Tony? Tom, is that a leftover hand or a new question? Leftover hand. We have no questions, Bill. Excellent. Go ahead. All right, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Okay. We can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so that was the fishing mortality threshold. We are now on to the fishing mortality target. Technical input, uh, it's the probability that the fishing mortality is above the target. And our question is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is whether or not fishing mortality is above the target? If there are no Any questions. Hands? Any hands, Tony? No hands, Bill. Okay, hey, go ahead. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. And next slide, please. Okay, this is another uh, component we're now getting um, away from some of the stock assessment stuff and this one is actually it, it is related to the stock status stuff um, but this one is how much model uncertainty is there and so this one now um, these, this is going to be a little bit different this is a qualitative score uh, that the uh, technical folks apply to this one it's based on information such as uh, you know, model diagnostics, like retrospective patterns, some of the sensitivity runs um, that they do and how, you know, different they might have been, how the model is fitting the data, um, how the model is able to estimate parameters um, and sensitivity of the model to starting uh, values. And so this is a, a technical input. Um, it's not about stock status, but is about the tool we use to determine stock status. 
in the importance of that. So the question for us is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is model uncertainty? Any questions for Jay or Sarah? No questions, Bill. Great, go ahead. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Seeing none, I will close the poll. And next slide, please. Okay, now we're moving on to management uncertainty. So how much management uncertainty is there? Uh, this is another kind of ranking score that the technical folks um, have provided. It's based on information such as past management performance, illegal fishing activities, ability to regulate removals, and ability to monitor the fishery and to monitor compliance. Um, and so the question here is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is management uncertainty? No questions, Bill. Very good. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Seeing none, I will close the poll. And next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, the last one in that first um, additional uncertainty or the, the additional uncertainty category that we had on there and that is environmental uncertainty. And so um, in this case, uh, the technical input is another qualitative score. Um, and what this one is getting at is it's based on information such as environmental drivers of recruitment, habitat loss, climate change vulnerability, uh, predator prey dependence, and natural mortality not accounted for in the stock assessment. And so our question here is relative to other components of the decision tool, how important is environmental uncertainty? And so this one, just to sort of reemphasize, um, we have one on the ecosystem and the trophic importance. This is the other uh, environmental um, aspects that you might want to um, account for. And, and recall that you're thinking about this specifically for the case of to talk. Uh, and I think I already, uh, I, so the question is, I'm not sure if I said it yet, is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is environmental uncertainty? I see no questions. Okay, very good. Sarah, are you there? Yes. Is there a way I I, I, I clicked the wrong button? Um, 
Is that, is that a problem? I already submitted it before I... We can fix it after the fact. I, I, I'm guessing it shows you just sort of like a submitted screen. You don't have a chance to change it. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to change it and it won't change. Okay, I'll make a note of that and I'll, I'll follow up with you after. Um, okay, this is Mike Luisi. Yeah, or actually I think you can, if you want to submit it as a question, um, I can also do that or we can email after. Either way, but we'll sort that out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you want to just shoot me a quick email, I'll, I'll just I'll remember this is the environmental uncertainty question. Will um, do. Okay, great, thanks. And if anyone else um, has uh, questions or needs more time, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the poll. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, the next one I alluded to on the last slide, this is how important is to talk to the ecosystem or other key species. Uh, again, another qualitative score from the technical folks. This is based on Tatog's role in maintaining other key species. Uh, as an example, other important fish species or threatened or endangered species. Um, and then also if Tatog perform ecosystem services that are important or have some uh, key ecosystem function. And so the question here is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important is ecosystem slash trophic importance for Tatog? I see no questions. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Next slide, please. Okay, we are in the home stretch here. We are on to the socioeconomic questions. And recall that they're kind of split up. Uh, there are two on recreational, two on commercial, and uh, they each have one short-term and one long-term consideration. So we're starting off with what is the short-term socioeconomic effect of the proposed uh, management change on, on the fishery? So I know there is um, no management change that we're thinking about um, specifically right now, but uh, you know, I think you can think about it in the context of um, any management change, uh, you know, it would likely be a uh, more restrictive change. So you can think about it in that context. So uh, for the technical input from the technical folks, the score was based on total ex vessel value, community depend, uh, community, a community dependence indicator, the scale of the proposed management change, in other words, the percent change to harvest produced by other components of the decision tool and the anticipated effect on the community. Um, and, you know, typically this would be a harvest reduction. And so that would be a negative short term effect. Um, and this one would typically push back on the recommended probability if you gave it more importance. Uh, so the question is relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important are short-term socioeconomic effects on the commercial fishery? Any questions for Jay on this one? And, and Jay, just to be clear, I'm thinking of this in terms of uh, um, the party charter is falling under the recreational category of these questions. I'll just confirm if I'm thinking about that correctly. Um, I agree with you, Mr. Chair. I think when you're thinking about um, party and charter, I, at this stage, we don't 
manage them separately, I don't think. <laughs> so um, I think you can think about them as a component of the, of the recreational fishery. Thanks, Jay. Any other questions? Nope, no questions, Bill. Okay, very good. Okay, if you need more time, please raise a hand. Seeing none, I will close the poll. Next slide, please. Okay, sticking with the commercial sector here, the next question is, uh, the next technical component is, what is the long-term socioeconomic effect of the proposed management change on the commercial fishery. So now we're thinking long term. Uh, the technical input here was a score based on the total ex vessel value, community dependence uh, indicators, the scale of the proposed management change, uh, and the anticipated effect on the community. Um, again, you know, this is typically represented by a harvest reduction. But when you're thinking about it in the long term, uh, there could be a positive effect because the, you know, the population will um, rebound. Um, and so this typically adds to the recommended probability. In other words, um, adds more precaution um, if you score it higher. So relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important are long-term long socioeconomic effects on the commercial fishery? Any I see questions? No questions. No questions. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Seeing none, I will close. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're moving on to the recreational uh, sector. Here, we're thinking about the short-term socioeconomic effects of the proposed management change on the recreational fishery. Excuse me. This score uh, from the technical folks was based on total directed trips. Another community dependence indicator, the scale of the proposed management change, and the anticipated effect on the community. Uh, so again, typically this is a harvest represented as a harvest reduction. And in the short term, this would generally be a negative effect. Uh, and again, um, the scoring on this one will typically push back on the recommended probability, um, the higher you score it. So relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important are short-term socioeconomic effects on the recreational fishery? I don't see any hands.
Okay, please raise a hand if you need more time. Seeing none, I will close. And next slide, please. All right, here is our last uh, poll question. Uh, recreational sector still, and now we're thinking about the long-term socioeconomic effects of the proposed management change on the recreational fishery. Again, based on directed trips, community dependence, uh, scale of the proposed management change and the anticipated effect on the community. Um, still talking about it, you know, potentially a harvest reduction in the long term. This is likely a positive effect because uh, presumably your population would um, re-increase. Uh, and so this typically adds to the recommended probability. In other words, makes it more precautionary. So relative to the other components of the decision tool, how important are long-term socioeconomic effects on the recreational fishery? Any questions? No questions. Okay, if anyone needs more time, please raise a hand. Seeing none, I will close this poll. And I think we just have one more slide, Maya. Okay, last slide, everybody. Nice job getting through that. Um, so next steps, the average scores from the board members uh, will be looked at to produce those preliminary weightings. Um, and then, you know, as mentioned, uh, additional feedback will be gathered, hopefully will be gathered from the folks that weren't able to attend this meeting. Um, and they uh, can watch in the comfort of their own home, the, the presentation here, um, if they wanted to help guide them through it. Um, this will be brought back to the board for discussion um, and then potentially approved at the annual meeting. So there's a couple of steps left for actually generating the, the weightings themselves. Um, but, you know, I think that's basically the um, kind of the gist of it. That's how we um, will create or we have created the weightings. Um, we're just looking for a little more information from folks. So I uh, will compile the preliminary risk and uncertainty report with the technical inputs from the technical committee and the committee for economic and social science. Um, and that will also be made available to us for review at the annual meeting. So with that, I uh, am done with the presentation. We are done with the poll and I'm happy to turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, for any uh, closing comments. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Sarah. And, uh, and I'll open up. Are there any any remaining questions or any points that anybody wants to make um, uh, relative to this exercise we just went through? Just giving it a second. I don't see anybody raising their hand, Bill. Okay. Thank you, Tony. And so now we're at the, at, for the agenda, we're at the time uh, for public comment, if any. Do we have any any hands or anybody who has indicated they, they want to make a comment from the public? Just giving folks a second to raise their hand. I don't see any hands raised. Excellent. And then the last item on the agenda is other business. Is there any other business today to bring before the board? I don't see any hands raised. Then we are adjourned and I thank everybody for uh, for their participation this morning. And um, like all of you look forward to seeing how this uh, plays out and seeing the, the final report at the annual meeting. So thank you and a special thank you to Jay and Sarah for an excellent, excellent job.
Have a good morning, everyone.